ladies and gentlemen, let's stand for the reading of God's holy word. Turn your Bibles to Daniel chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. The acceptable Christian sin of gluttony, number 71, slash Daniel fast encouragement, message number 7. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar, and the thing was true. <clears throat> But the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing, and had understanding of the vision, of the vision. We have too many Christians today, too many preachers today, who do not understand. And they do not understand the vision. They do not understand the thing and they do not understand the vision. They lack understanding. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. May God help the church and the people in the church to mourn again over sin and over judgment and not try to rejoice and celebrate while you're being chastised by God with the fake happiness. Verse 3, I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for allowing us to see this beautiful day. Thank you for allowing us to accomplish uh, those things you wanted us to accomplish. And uh, we thank you for allowing us to see another beautiful day on earth. And we thank you for the thousands of days that you have blessed us to see. It is only by your mercy and grace by your hand that we stand here today for you have indeed brought us a mighty long way all by yourself and we individually confess our sins our failures our faults anything that's not consistent with what you are about and what you want in our lives, anything that does not line up with your Holy Word and your Holy Spirit. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins, our failures, and our faults. Crucify, Lord, our flesh and the old man within us all, and fill us all with the fullness and the power, the unction and the anointing, the fruit and the liberty of your Holy Spirit, not only to preach your Holy Word, but to hear your holy word, but not only to hear it, but to do it. 
and then not only to hear it and do it, but to share it with others. For Lord, we are men and women most miserable, calling ourselves Christians if we never go and tell other people from your holy word, the gospel, and other biblical truths. The end game is to get the gospel to new people, to lost people who don't know you as Savior. We have not done anything if we have not done that. Constantly just encouraging one another is wonderful and good in its place. But we as the church, we are not doing anything. We're not accomplishing one thing if we don't go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. We thank you, Lord, for those who are faithful this morning from this congregation in passing out gospel leadership. And uh, it means the world. It means the world for people to be so conscious to. In the midst of everything that's going on, uh, we thank you, Lord, for folks here uh, who have a heart for lost souls and a concern about reaching them with the gospel message. We know that that is of you. And so, Lord, we pray in these perilous days, help us to uh, pray to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways and to humble ourselves. And Lord, grant us fresh anointing, unction, and the power of your Holy Spirit to preach your holy word. Move upon the hearts of millions to come to, to hear the gospel preached and to come to know your Savior. Move upon the hearts of millions of Christians to be revived and to get back to their first love. The Lord work a divine miracle and bless us with over three million dollars so that we can answer the Macedonian call as so many people from around the globe by asking us for simple things like Bibles to do ministry with. And Lord, we thank you in advance for what you will do. We cast all care upon you. For Lord, we know that you care for us. And uh, Lord, we pray that you glorify your holy name. Lift up your holy son, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated in the house of the Lord. <coughs> William Secker said, by fasting, the body learns to obey. We are following the example of the exiled prophet. First, in humbling ourselves before God Almighty, as we should. A part of that humility is confessing our sins because unfortunately and sadly we are a sinful people. And then we were reminded the other day that we ought to be repenting of our sins, that is turning away from our sins. And uh, one of the greatest needs today is for repentance in the church, repentance the turning away from sin. And by the way, it is a beautiful thing when saints get to that point where they understand they must choose to say no to the devil. They must choose uh, to say no to sin. And then they choose to do so. Uh, now you're becoming truly beautiful. And you're growing up in the Lord. And then uh, we need to study the Word of God. Uh, you can't hear? Speak it off. Okay, you got to get out from in front of that. You got to back on? What happened? Hmm? The one up? So you what? Okay. Well, make sure that that started. 
And so, ladies and gentlemen, as we were so rudely interrupted by the devil, let me continue. Today, another thing we ought to do is spend time in prayer during our fast. While you're on the Daniel fast, are you praying? Don't get weary in well-doing. We often hear of prayer and fasting together. However, we know that it is possible to pray without fasting and to fast without praying. But we should not do that. We ought to fast and pray, similar to watch and pray. It's not enough just to watch, you need to pray. It's not enough just to pray, but you need to watch. We have too many saints in the church today uh, who are not watching at all. They're watching too much television, but they're not watching that devil in that corner. And then we have some who don't pray at all, but they're always watching. God wants us to watch and pray. God wants us to pray and fast. In Daniel 9, 3, we read, I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting. We know from the, the rest of the book that Daniel was a man of prayer. In fact, I would venture to say what made Daniel a great saint of God, a great man of God, a great prophet of God, is this one single thing, prayer. If Daniel was known for anything, he was known to be a man of prayer. For you might recall from Sunday school, he was thrown into the lion's den because of his commitment to praying three times a day to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen, somebody. The God of Israel. When King Nebuchadnezzar threatened to kill the magicians, astrologers, and wise men in his court, if they could not come up with the interpretation of a troubling dream, Daniel got together with his three friends and prayed all night until God revealed the meaning of the king's dream to him. Not only the meaning, but the dream itself. God can and will tell you everything you need to know. Now, God is still doing that, by the way. People who spend time with God in prayer and then if you add on fasting it's a, a double blessing uh, God will reveal things to you to that person that he will not reveal to other Christians who don't pray now I know that to be a fact some pastors and some preachers can't see no further than five inches in front of their faces because they don't spend time in prayer. And they're constantly being surprised and shocked when God would tell them what is going to happen next if they would pray. And they can warn the people. I'm telling you right now that the megachurch will be going bye-bye uh, soon, the true megachurch. You're going to find m many people worshiping in homes. And the megachurch buildings will be sold as arenas in years to come. You mark my words, because persecution is going to increase in America be that as it may, and Daniel chapter 9 is a lengthy prayer of the elderly prophet on behalf of his people. 
The time of fasting is a time for seeking God. We replace our hunger for food with a hunger for the Word of God and for spiritual sustenance, taking to heart the biblical truth that Jesus stated, man does not live by bread alone. One of the ways we pursue the fulfillment of this hunger is through prayer to God. Andrew Murray said, prayer is reaching out after the unseen. Fasting is letting go of all that is seen and temporal. Fasting helps express, deepen, confirm the resolution that we are ready to sacrifice anything and everything, even ourselves, to attain what we seek for the kingdom of God and for the glory of God. Amen. Somebody. When you start fasting, you start getting serious because you're messing with your, 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 your enjoyment and your pleasure and your comfort when you start fasting. We were taking care of something earlier today and uh, my children who are on the Daniel Fast with me, I treated them to a veggie burger from a restaurant, but I could not eat the veggie burger because it had that wonderful tasting bread on it. I couldn't eat any in that bread, that special bread had yeast in it. Now I was tempted. I was so tempted that I told the lady at the counter to cut it in half. But then when I saw it back there with the children, I saw that it was Nothing but a white bun, I couldn't eat it with yeast in it. Uh, that's uncomfortable. But if, so when you're fasting, you're getting serious because you're messing with your comfort. You, when, you can't, when you can't eat a veggie burger, you know you are, you're, you're getting down with it. Uh, you're getting serious about serving God and getting your prayers answered. What is that thing you seek for the kingdom of God? Are you seeking more souls to be saved for the revival of the saints? What is the dream or vision that God has placed in your heart? What is the burden he has laid on your soul? During this time, ladies and gentlemen, of going without the pleasure of the food you desire. And this time when your flesh is starved so that your soul may be filled, be faithful in prayer. The devil will fight your prayer life. He will do everything he can uh, to stop you from praying. Spend extra time in prayer. Pray when you feel like it. Pray when you're weary. Pray when you're tired. God will honor your faith and hear your prayers. After a while, by and by, you will see what God is doing in your life. Do as Daniel did. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Do as Daniel did. Set your face to the Lord God and seek him by prayer and supplication. Pray without ceasing. Jesus gave a parable to this end that men are always to pray and not to faint. Praying always with all prayer. 
while you're fasting and pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for this reminder today that no matter what we're doing, fasting or not, we ought to be men and women who are constantly in prayer to you. We thank you for the millions of blessings, the manifold blessings that you bestowed upon each and every one of us. There are over a million things going on in our bodies right now that allow us to sit here and to stand here uh, with the heart pumping blood through our veins and air in our lungs is only you. It's all by your might and by your power. Some of us should be dead already, but you have held us up by your hand. And so, Lord, help us to keep on praying and help us to keep on fasting. And we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would break the stranglehold of the devil and of the demons of hell that he has in your church. The stranglehold of gluttony, the stranglehold of overeating, the stranglehold of being overweight, the stranglehold of diabetes, the stranglehold of being obese. Some feel like they just cannot control themselves. Some are addicted to Coca-Cola. Some are addicted to other foods in your church. And we need to repent. Grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to repent, to change our ways, to turn from our wicked ways and to humble ourselves and to seek your face and to see sinning in your sight. For your glory, praise, and honor and for the good of those who are lost so that they can see at least we are dealing with it in the church, that we are acknowledging this problem and that at the same time we're doing something about it. We're correcting ourselves. You have been so gracious to us. Help us to take advantage of the space that you've given to us to repent and repent. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, a little practical information regarding the Daniel Fast. Kristen Fiola, author of The Ultimate Guide uh, to the Daniel Fast, answers some frequently asked questions regarding the Daniel Fast. Number 15, I am diabetic. Is it safe for me to do the Daniel Fast? She goes on to answer, the Daniel Fast is an extremely healthy way of eating. And many people with diabetes have done the fast with success. I would recommend staying away from foods that are problematic and spike your blood sugar levels. If you have concerns about specific foods, consult a nutritionist or your doctor. Number 16, will I experience any side effects? Some people do experience side effects, such as bloating, headaches, fatigue, and muscle soreness as your body adjusts to the changes in your eating habits. Typically, these unpleasant symptoms will subside after the first few days. By the second week, many people feel a surge of energy once they've settled into the fast. Of course, drinking water can help flush out your system and bring relief more quickly. Now, if you're suffering from headaches and palpitations and uh, constipation and breakouts on your face and all of that, and that's because you have a whole lot of toxins and stuff that's not healthy in your system. You need to get that cleansed out. You may need to take a little drink uh, 
that you find in the uh, drugstore. It's a little green drink. It's a laxative kind of thing to help get the ball rolling. And then you might want to take an herbal tea, uh, a detoxifying tea. Drink that once a day and, and that'll help cleanse out all of those toxins real quick. You may want to do an enema as well. And I believe that you will see all of that stuff subside pretty quickly. Number 17, do you have suggestions on how to do the Daniel fast with children? My children have always fasted with me down through the years when they were younger and uh, before the age of accountability, if you will. They really wanted to fast. I, I found it so strange. And um, they, they wanted to fast with their papa. And they, and they did, and of course I didn't let them fast as long as I did, but they, they, they did fast. Uh, and she goes on to say, my husband and I have two uh, daughters, age 12 and 10. Each year is different when it comes to their level of participation. For, <clears throat> for the January 2015 Daniel fast that they went on, she said, my oldest decided to do a sugar fast for one week instead of the full Daniel fast. Nothing with added sugar. My youngest chose to do a three week Daniel fast along with my husband and me. It was her decision. I recommend trying to include children as much as possible. They don't have to follow the fast 100%. For example, I treated the children to that veggie burger today, and they had that bun on there that was, had yeast in it, and it's no big deal. I just couldn't eat it uh, because I had already said and agreed that I was not going to eat, uh, as Daniel said, any pleasant bread. So the children don't have to uh, go 100% about it. Uh, to learn about the discipline of prayer and fasting. Also, seeds of faith will be planted that will grow over the years. In fact, all of my children are fasting uh, during this Daniel fast. Now, in this series, uh, as we focus on overcoming the sin of gluttony and managing our bodies as God intended, we must not lose sight of the most important part of our existence, our spiritual life. Even those of you who are fit, who eat right, and who exercise regularly must still address the condition of your soul. You may keep your body in perfect condition till the day you die, but you will still die. We all will die, and the only thing that will matter is the condition of your soul. Is your soul in shape? Is your soul in right standing with God? Are you saved? Are you born again? The only way to make sure of that is to trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior from sin and the consequences of sin, which is hell. He alone can save your soul, but you rather put you in right standing with God and ensure that you do not perish in that awful place called hell. Now, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, here is how you can trust him today. First, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Secondly, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. Third, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10.28, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Also, the Bible states in Revelation 21, 8, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers 
sorcerers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now that is bad news, my dear friend. But I have some good news for you. Jesus Christ said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, that includes you, that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul today, and he will save you. For Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart, your heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou and you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Dear friend of mine, if you are willing to believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, believing that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again, I'm willing to lead you in that prayer that is commonly called the sinner's prayer. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner that I have done evil in your sight. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Now ladies and gentlemen, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead, allow me to say congratulations on doing the most important thing in life. And that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email me at dw3 at gospelightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Dear friend, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good. Here's our prayer. Let's all stand.